No way. So, what did we ask for from Gatto? Weren't you there, dumbass? I don't know. Uh, we didn't really ask for anything. Sometimes I think we'd be better off alone. You can leave if you want. It's not worth it. No, it's not. So, should we go? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Thank you. And now we can take questions. Um, so thank you for coming to see Aro Blackman and Aro Sikoriak. Um They're going to stick around and sign books now. Oh, sorry. It's question time. So I'm going to come around with the mic. And please raise your hands if you have any questions. Anybody? Uh, Mr. Blackman, would you talk a little bit about uh, the soldier's story? Oh, wow. Uh, well, it was an absolute fluke that I got to do it. I mean, really, uh, just a series of uh, coincidences that were in a long chain, and if one link was missing out of this incredibly long chain, the film never would have been made. Um, and isn't that the way it is uh, so often with things? Um, I was in Milan... Um, I noticed that in the hotel where I was staying, um, the uh, program director of PBS was there, Suzanne Weil. Uh, so I had just done an hour of film. Uh, it was a Christmas program for PBS a few years back. And uh, she asked me, do I have any other ideas? And I was a little taken aback. So I said, no, this is going to be a long answer. I, I said it was a long chain. Uh, in any event, uh, I uh, went out of the hotel and I happened to pass La Scala and there was a big sign uh, featuring an upcoming production of The Soldier's Tale. So I thought, why not? Went back to the hotel and fortunately at one point I saw her again and I said, hey, what about doing an animated version of Stravinsky's Least Water Soldat? I always like to use the French, the original name. And she said, and here's another coincidence, well, I used to be head of the Walker Art Center, and we mounted that, and uh, it was very popular. So, uh, send me a proposal, and uh, we'll pass it on. And I thought to myself, what do you mean, pass it on? Who is she going to pass it on to? I mean, she's the program director of PBS, Ronald Reagan. Uh, in any event, I, I did it. You know, I just wrote something. Uh, and I didn't hear anything, and I didn't expect to hear anything, because... Uh, you know, I'm in the business of writing proposals and proposals and proposals. Still am. Um, and then I got a call from GBH. It happened that Stravinsky's centenary was coming up. Uh, and uh, th that began. I was given 20,000 bucks. And with 20,000 bucks, I just started producing it. And uh, it was going to be a four-hour uh, maxi-series with a lot of people doing episodes, uh, but mine was the only thing that was underway, so it got finished. That's the story. Luck, and a lot of bad luck, you know? But I suppose a lot of persistency. I mean, I, you know, I could have not written that proposal, which I'm sure was a pro forma request. Okay. Uh, yeah, question for Bob. Um, oh, that's right. <laughs> On the right, my right. The other Bob. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Oh, your right. My right. Yes, yes. Right, left. <laughs> uh, yeah. I was just wondering, um, what was the very first seed of inspiration that uh, for you to start setting comics, uh, you know, characters to this form with the classics? Thank you, Dale, for a good question. I. Um, 
I actually forgot to mention that my entire book is adaptations of classic literature. So, uh, in the style of cartoon characters, uh, famous cartoons. And I don't remember what the very first bit of inspiration was, but I started making these in the 80s, and I was working, um, I was helping out at Raw Magazine, uh, the magazine started by Art Spiegelman and Francoise Mouly, and I was getting very excited by the kind of postmodern comics they were doing and sort of all the postmodernism that was in um, the world of art at that time. And I uh, wanted to find a way to make comics that I thought would be serious and worth reading, but I also have a streak of um, sarcasm in me. So I wanted to sort of deflate that idea even as I was trying to reach for that. Um, and a lot of the people who were working at Raw were into appropriation and were into, um, you know, remixing. Before they called it mashups, that's what a lot of people were doing in the 80s. And that was really inspiring to me. Uh, so I can't point to one thing, but a lot of it may go back to Harvey Kurtzman, which is interesting because Bob was saying how he, uh, he worked for... Kurtzman's magazine uh, Humbug in the 50s and 